I won't release any of the credit card statements and records for any of their agents. What are they trying to hide? The system wasn't working. Going through the system didn't work. I did everything that uh, they advised me to do. It didn't do any good. Hoppy Heidelberg was an upstanding member of the community with no criminal record. He'd been a grand juror for years. But when he started asking questions about the Middle Eastern connection and FBI prior knowledge and BATF involvement, the FBI actually came to his house brandishing firearms and told him to shut his mouth if he knew what was good for him. When he refused to be part of the cover-up and demanded that he be able to call witnesses as his right as a grand juror, the judge kicked him off the case. Just one more piece of this massive cover-up. The News Channel has learned of another strange development. Apparently, before the bombing, Governor Frank Keating's brother, Mark, had been working on a novel about a terrorist bombing in Oklahoma City. Stranger still, one of the characters in the novel was named Thomas McVeigh. Governor Frank Keating's brother, Martin Keating, wrote the final jihad. In the book, a Tom McVeigh masterminds the bombing of the Oklahoma City building. He dedicated the book to the Knights of the Secret Circle, a known Illuminati group. And he wrote the book two years before the bombing. The tragic events of Oklahoma City, if the truth was known to the public, makes it even more tragic, even more horrific. You see, it's now a monument to the police state, a monument to the sacrifice the government made of American life, American blood, of American tears, as an excuse to get the feds to be able to circle the wagons against the American people, to have a pretext, an excuse to expand their police state. They covered the whole operation up. It's clear that they had prior knowledge that multiple bombs were detonated on the inside of the building, that the feds have grabbed the 12 surveillance camera tapes and are refusing to release them even in 2002, threatening grand jurors, destroying the building and burying it under guard. The federal government blamed this tragic event on Christians, conservatives, gun owners. But if you look at the evidence, it's clear who's behind it, the federal government. And they use this just like Hitler used the Reichstag to get martial law cranking in America. $62 million is coming to Oklahoma soon to help anti-terrorism and disaster relief efforts. Government crime certainly does pay, especially when it's government-sponsored terrorism against its own institutions. That's right, the BATF locally got tens of millions of dollars extra funding, but so did every other federal agency that tries to control the American people. $24 billion increase in anti-terrorism funds. And after September 11th, they've now tripled that. And, of course, the BATF ensured that the building was completely demolished, so there couldn't be any evidence of their heinous acts. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, they actually buried the building under guard at a private landfill with Wacken Hut guards protecting it. From A to Z, federal fingerprints all over it and doing everything they can to suppress the truth. For Bill Clinton the servant of the New World Order, whose approval rating exploded after the attack. And his attack dog, the butcher of Waco, Reno. She was very happy to blame it on Christians and conservatives and gun owners. It was her excuse to expand federal control over local police and to merge the military with the police in new giant anti-terrorism training camps where the military and the police prepare for mass gun confiscation and extermination of the American people. Evidence of that coming up later. You've seen the evidence of government-sponsored terrorism throughout history. Now let's take a closer look at what happened on September 11, 2001, and how it's being used to usher in a new world order. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea. A new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. 
The Council on Foreign Relations, known as the CFR, an organization publicly sworn to destroy American national sovereignty and usher in a tyrannical world police state, could not contain their glee on September 12th, the day after the tragic attack. They announced their new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, I think, only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. There it is, the CFR actually admitting that this crisis was helping them to bring in a new world order, global government. And how would they get that job done? You see, for decades, going back to Jimmy Carter and Brzezny Brzezinski, the national security advisor, they had been breeding, creating these terrorist organizations, funding them and training them to attack America. Brzezny Brzezinski, co-founder of the Trilateral Commission with David Rockefeller and other luminaries of the global system, actually bragged in his 1998 book, these criminals love to brag, the grand chessboard of how America would be attacked by Afghan terrorists and how global government, a war for global government, would then take place in Central Asia. How it could be used to roll out national ID cards and a global police state here in the United States. All of this being planned back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. The relationship between the CIA and the Afghan freedom fighters, the Mujahideen, even predates Ronald Reagan. The bonds that were forged there with the Central Intelligence Agency led to the creation of their super asset, Osama bin Laden, the rich Saudi Arabian sheik, whose family to this day builds all U.S. military bases in the Middle East, North Africa, and in Central Asia. It's on the record that bin Laden's a CIA asset, and every time an American president needs a distraction overseas, a ship or an embassy gets blown up. On October 12, 1998, the USS Cole, while docked at the port of Aden in Yemen, was attacked. 17 Americans were killed, 39 wounded, sacrificed yet again on the altar of globalism. Just like clockwork, every time Bill Clinton was in trouble, an embassy, a ship, a barracks was blown up. Just like Oklahoma City, the CIA asset bin Laden was delivering time and time again, and Bill Clinton was there protecting him, refusing to allow foreign countries like Sudan even Iraq and Afghanistan to give them the files of where Al-Qaeda was in the world and yes, where they were active even in the continental United States. Sudan even offered to arrest bin Laden three separate times. Bill Clinton answered by bombing with state-of-the-art cruise missiles their only pharmaceutical plant. Denying Africa desperately needed medicines. You see, in reality, it's a lot bigger than just Republican or Democrat. The reality is the Central Intelligence Agency, controlled by Wall Street, has been grooming this creature and his family over the last 50 years to carry out dangerous projects in the Middle East, Central Asia, and North Africa. Back in 1996, the CIA worked in tandem with Pakistan to create the Taliban. Then in 1998, when the Afghans offered to arrest bin Laden, the CIA responded publicly telling him to do no such thing. They needed this boogeyman for one more big action, and his family the entire time was being rewarded with giant satellite company deals, oil company mergers, and some of the biggest construction projects in the world. New world coming. So America will become increasingly vulnerable to hostile attack on our homeland, and our military superiority will not entirely protect us. Americans will likely die on American soil, possibly in large numbers. Americans will likely die on American soil, possibly in large numbers. Possibly in large numbers. Possibly in large numbers. Shortly after September 11th, witnesses came forward documenting that bin Laden had actually met and planned the September 11th attacks with the CIA for 10 days in Dubai in an American army hospital. French intelligence was so upset by what they had learned that they actually got media reports published before September 11th, specifically warning that bin Laden was planning to hijack aircraft and fly them into tall buildings in downtown Manhattan, as well as the Pentagon. Of course, the Pentagon, the Defense Department, didn't need to be warned. 
First media reports that came out said that five of the hijackers had been trained at the Pensacola Naval Air Station. Later media reports in the Pensacola News Journal confirmed that three of the hijackers had been trained at the Pensacola Naval Air Station two years before September 11th. The San Francisco Chronicle also reported that one of the top lieutenants of al-Qaeda was actually an FBI asset, not to mention a member of the U.S. Army. The next piece of evidence you're about to see is the biggest smoking gun of them all. President George W. Bush signed Presidential Decision Directive W199I, telling FBI agents as well as defense intelligence officers that if they tried to stop al-Qaeda, they would be arrested under national security implications. It's been in every publication from the Wall Street Journal to the Washington Times. Actual lawsuits have now been filed by FBI agents who are outraged by the fact that they were not allowed to stop al-Qaeda.